Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? I hope that everybody is doing well. I promised you the last time I spoke to you that we would be going over some videos or I would be producing some videos for any of the content in the chapters that I felt really needed explained. So chapter two, as we're talking about in finance, is all about reviewing the accounting information that we learned in accounting one and accounting two. I'm not going to cover the basics of accounting one, as that is just the entire cycle, journal entries, adjusting entries, um, closing entries, our statements, so forth and so on. We start here in our um, chapter two with reviewing the statements and what they mean to us. And again, back in accounting one, we learned the very basics. So I wanted to cover some of these things because I know that not everybody completely, for some miraculous reason, did not like accounting. I know there are a lot of you that do. Yay, I love accounting. But there are some of you that did not like accounting. So I just want to cover some basics just to give you a recap again because you're going to need that basic understanding in addition to reading the chapter. I'm going to create several little videos so that none of these videos get too lengthy to li actually listen to. So the very first statement that we learned, even in accounting one, at the very basic primary level, and in accounting one, until we got to chapter five, we were really strictly talking about sole proprietorships, which we just discussed in chapter one here in financing. Um, and then after five, we started learning about corporations, five and six, and then we carried that on to, into accounting two. But for the basic income statement, that's all we literally learned was that revenues minus expenses equals our net income. Revenues are anything that help our business generate cash. Anything with cash coming in, um, sales, uh, revenues for selling services or products, Whatever it is that we do for a business that generates money, that is revenue, money coming in. Expenses is the cost of doing business. So anything that we have that actually has to be paid for in order to conduct our business is considered expenses. And again, we talked about that way back in chapter two of accounting one. So they did get a little bit more complicated. At the end of accounting one, your teacher, or if I was your teacher, we asked you to do a multi-step income statement, which just really classified a whole bunch of different segments, like selling and administrative expenses. We put them together to be operating expenses to really see where we had our money coming in or where we were struggling. So that's all we did was kind of break it up. And the same thing when we did a corporate income statement, they were still the same concept of what's coming in versus what's going out. So even here in this chapter, they're doing the exact same thing. So keep that in mind as the basic income statement, though, is revenues minus expenses. And it's always going to keep the same format. We actually learned in accounting one statement of owner's equity. Here, because we're going to be talking mostly about corporations, that is more of a statement of retained earnings. But back in learning in accounting one, it, a statement of owner's equity was, again, for a sole proprietorship. So we learned we had a beginning balance plus the net income. Where did we get the net income relationship to the actual income statement over here that we calculated in step one? So we had that beginning balance plus our net income plus any owner investment. If the owner invested $1,000 or computers or a truck or something like that into the company, minus any withdrawals that he took out for that period of time equals your end balance. And that was a basic statement of owner's equity. The one that we focused on a lot of our time on in accounting one was the balance sheet. The balance sheet is basic ALO. Assets equal liabilities plus OE. That doesn't change either. No matter how far we get, we actually did a classified balance sheet at the end of accounting one, together with our multi-step income statement. And all we really did was kind of bust it up into separate categories. Um, and if you read through chapter two and you read through my assignments, I think it asks you kind of, I think one of the questions for the in-class is how are assets listed on the balance sheet 
giving you the answer here, just saying nice and easy. You should have learned from accounting one that everything listed in an assets under the balance sheet, especially classified balance sheet, is based on liquidity. And we would have talked about what, what liquidity means. Liquidity simply means how fast you can convert that asset to cash, how fast the owner can get cash out of that asset. And that's how things are based. That's why cash is always first on your balance sheet under your current assets because it's already cash. And then usually right behind that is accounts receivable. And then so forth and so on is expected when you actually expect to get the money or how fast you can convert it to cash. Um, so again, we'll talk about the differences here in our corporations. And then the last one in accounting one, we kind of don't spend too much time on your statement of cash flows, but your statement of cash flows is just a very easy way of seeing where your cash is coming in the business and out of the business based on three different segments. It's based on operating, investing, and financing. So again, we covered that in accounting one, but we covered a little bit more here and we talk a little bit more about how we actually put that together. So I just wanted to do a really quick recap on those. Um, any of the problems that I'm going to have you work through, I'm going to create a separate video for you to show you the steps of them. I just want to keep these videos kind of short. So these are all four of the statements that we really learned through accounting one and accounting two. Again, we learned three of the income statements. We did the basic income statement for probably the first two or three chapters. In chapter five and six, we turned that basic income statement into a multi-step income statement. And then finally in accounting two, we change this for your test into a corporate income statement. Balance sheets, we did basic, um, allo, and then we actually busted them up into their categories of assets, owner's equity, and then current and long-term liabilities. So that's all we did with this one. And then this one, the statement of cash flows, we touched on briefly but not too extensively. So if you have any questions on these, let me know, send me an email, and I'd be happy to try to explain them further. But there's examples. Again, I'm just kind of always looking this way, sorry, but I've got your textbook right here. Um, page 26 has a great example. I think your textbook does a really great job of showing you examples of each of the things that we're gonna talk about in the problem sections. They also do a really great job of showing you a practice problem and walking you through it. So just pay attention to the pages, pay attention to the assignment I ask you and go look back into the chapter to see what they're kind of doing with it. Um, but I just wanted to really quickly show you the basics. On to the next video. Bye guys.